Everyone, welcome back. It is I, your fearless leader, Trey Roland, and I am here with the analytical genius, the smarts behind the operation, Kevin Little. And Kev, today, it's early June. A lot of people say the dog days of college football, the doldrums, tumbleweed city, if you will. Not for us, because FSU is cooking and so are we. We never rest. Our families hate it. Our children feel neglected. Your dog feels unloved sometimes, Kevin. But you know why? <laughs> it's because we give our all to the people. We give all of our all to the people. And guess what, guys? We are in the thick of camp season right now. FSU just had a very big, very impressive uh, elite camp is what they called it. And for the first time in a couple years, I would say it actually lived up to the billing. Maybe not so much from a 2024 recruiting class perspective. There were some big names there. FSU commits Luke Cromenhawk, Landon Thomas, the five-star, Cam Davis, the highly regarded running back, B.J. Gibson, a, you know, a, a newer wide receiver commit. Those guys were all there representing the 24, 2024 class. But the 2025 kids, five stars all over the place. We will talk about those kids specifically, maybe the things that stood out to you. But, Kevin, you have now been to this event twice. What did you see out there on Saturday, and how did the talent compare from an on-the-field perspective from this year to last? Yeah, I think from I think you just saw a huge influx of top-end talent this season. So mm -hmm. um, last year, you you probably could count on one hand how many like five true five stars you had out there. This year, it felt like every position group had one or two kids that could potentially be five stars or are already five stars. So um, I, the talent level across the board was much higher. It felt like you were in previous years. It almost felt like you were sitting there trying to find some diamond in the roughs, like some guys that did particular things well, but this year you're looking at, at some of these position groups and specifically like, you know, what you were seeing out of the tight ends and what we were seeing out of the defensive ends. And it's like, these are elite groups of kids. It's, it's, truly starting to live up to the name elite camp. And um, so it's really kind of cool to see that, that step up that they took this year. Yeah. You don't have to do like the Jameis sweat anymore, <laughs> right? To see these kids particularly pop out of you, especially we're going to, when we look at the film, you guys are going to see there's some freaking monsters out there, dude. We're talking six, five, six, 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 seven, like kids that are like 14, 15 years old at six, seven. <laughs> it's really mind blowing. When, when you see them out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Kev, what did you think about the structure of the elite camp? And particularly, there was a lot of there were some one on one matchups, but a lot of this stuff was individual drills, like routes against air, things of that nature. As a learned gentleman like yourself, what are you looking for in a camp setting like this that really kind of pops out at you and makes you think, oh, this kid could be real nice in garnet and gold? So the two things that you can really get out of this are, I mean, you see their size when compared to other people playing the same position. So mm -hmm. that kind of gives an impression. And as, as we look through the film, you'll kind of see those kids immediately stand out. Um, but you also get to see kind of a fluidity of movement. Um, routes on air specifically, these one-on-ones for offensive line, defensive line. They're not really able to kind of get their hands on each other in a, in a true sense of the word, but um, you can kind of see how they move in space that kind of more fluid players stand out from the less fluid players. And um, yeah, I, I think really what you're looking for is just is a good way to kind of compare kids against each other in, in a more formal setting. Cause when you're watching these highlights, these huddle highlights, it's often one or two, four or five stars on a field with a bunch of kids that won't play college football. And mm -hmm. so you don't really get to see them, compared to other people. Um, and so this was a really great opportunity to kind of to see them out there. And I think every year you get one or two kids that really pops and shines that you, that you might not have expected otherwise. All right, well, let's get into the film. I want you to think about though, where I want to think of some superlatives. I want you to think about who your MVP was at the camp, biggest surprise for you. And then the guy that you would mortgage and sell all of your chemistry books to have them as a part <laughs> of the Florida state Seminoles roster. So think about that as we go through, I want to do a tease for the people. I want, I want to do it while the film's going on. It's really popping, but let's put that on and let's see what we're talking about. Cause Kevin, I've reviewed the film before we recorded full disclosure. There was some impressive stuff, man. They, these kids do not look like the Cocoa beach high school uh, athletes that I played against during my day. 
So we're kind of hopping right kind of towards the end of the film. A lot of this beforehand was just kind of indie stuff. I think we can probably squeeze a little bit more bang for our buck out of the kind of group stuff. So here we see uh, this is Luke Cromenhawk and Tramel Jones uh, right here, kind of back to back. So this is a nice clip of both of them throwing. So take a second look at Luke. He has a nice compact motion. Um, able to kind of get that ball downfield, deliver a nice strike. We'll be able to see Tramel in this next clip. Similar thing. I, I think there was kind of a question about Tramel and his pat, like true passing ability. And you can kind of see, you know, s standing next to Luke Cromanhawk, it's not like he's, he's being completely outclassed by someone who's, who's regarded as an older guy in one of the better pure passers in his class. Mm -hmm. Now, before we move on to this, cause I would, I would like to spend some time talking about this next prospect <laughs> just for obvious reasons. Take a look at, uh, with the eye test. How many times have you seen Luke throw live Kev? Uh, I've seen him throw live twice. So th this elite camp and last elite camp. What do you think about the progression? What do you think about him? He's got a lot of, this is a kid who's like recruiting trajectory as a prospect has just been honestly meteoric. Is this a guy that can come in and immediately contend for starting time uh, for the position? That's a nice throw. Yeah. So this is kind of what you're seeing. So right here, he throws a dime on the first throw down field, right? This is kind of standard. He's got a good arm. Um, kind of comes with the territory when, when you're looking at these high four star, five star kids. Um, but this is kind of what you're looking for in a modern quarterback. So this is more and more prize. Can you throw off platform? So uh, they, they got a, they got a fake rusher in here just to try to get him to reset his feet and make a throw down field. Um, this is much harder than it seems. Um, Cause you're moving one direction the, the wide receiver is moving the other direction and you've, you've got to kind of meet him in between. Um, he does a good job here. Even changes up his arm angle a little bit to get the ball out. Uh, I, I, I think Luke is a, is a really impressive uh, kid. I think that I, we, we did that interview with him where we, where we watched film. I think Whew. physically he's got the tools and it, it seems like mentally he's got the tools. Um, I mean, you can, you can tell that he's, he's a younger kid, you know, he's, he's 17, years old so like uh that kind of maturity will will come with him but he's yeah, got all the all the tools that you need um need in a quarterback i agree and the and chris and brendan and they mentioned it on the on the bench podcast if you guys didn't listen to it today it, he was able to blend in with a bunch of like three four like dyed in the wool stone cold nerds like the four of us on this thing and they called him a chameleon which i find to actually be a good thing in a locker room it means you can relate to a lot of people you're able to communicate your message can resonate the kid is insanely smart great recall i think he's going to get command of this offense very quickly and he's clearly a hard worker because he has progressed so much. The physical tools are there. I'm very excited about him. Tramel Jones looking next to him. Before we move on to this tight end group, um, Tramel, what would you think of him? What would you think? Is, is he a guy? A lot of people are kind of pegging him as like a like a high floor but low ceiling type of guy. Are they, are they underselling him a little bit? Yeah, I don't know if that's how I would I would put him. I, I think this is a really hard um, – it's a really hard setting to evaluate quarterbacks. You don't get to see them really read the field, which I think is probably the most important aspect of, of being a good quarterback is how do you evaluate kind of the mental part of the game? Yeah. Um, I think he's got tools to be successful. Uh, I think in a camp setting like this, you don't get to really see his athleticism. I think he is, is a, is a pretty athletic guy on top of, of being a, a decent thrower. Uh, of the football and I, I I think he looked good I think based off what I've heard this was really the first time I got to see him live based off what I've heard is he looks better every time he goes out there and so um, I think there's a lot of encouraging things around him I think the staff really likes him yep FSU quarterback position looking good they also did offer a 2026 quarterback in the group uh, Roman Seymour he's an FSU legacy son of Roland Seymour late 90s defensive end any relation to is. Trey Roland no, not at all. He's obviously <laughs> clearly not as athletic as I am. So, I mean, maybe one day he can grow up. But no, clearly that kid would beat the crap out of me at 16 years old. Unfortunately, no relation. Yeah, you can. We don't have any clips of him throwing, but uh, he, he looked really good out there throwing the football. Um, 
he's a taller kid. He's got a good frame to work on. So I think they see a lot of potential there. Yeah. Impressive size, man, for a 2026 too. And speaking of, uh, let's, let's talk about size on the 2026. Um, <laughs> this next kid coming up tight end, Kendra Harrison from Reedsville, North Carolina, 2026, six, seven, 235 pounds. What did you think of this kid? Seeing him in person. That's quite the, <laughs> I just, I, I can't, I can't fathom that sort of size. Did he move well? Did he kind of look like a newborn baby deer trying to figure out like the length of his limbs? What, what, what did you think of this kid, man? Cause I'm impressed <laughs> right off the right off rip. Yeah, no, he's on a field full of four and five stars. He stands out and he's going into his sophomore year of high school. Um, Crazy. I've had I had people telling me that they weren't as high on him because he dropped a few passes that maybe he should move to defensive end. Um, I I love his ceiling at at tight end. Um, I think that. I mean, it's hard to not see shades of Darnell Washington out there. I mean, just a massive individual. I think he runs routes as well as you need him to run routes. Um, <laughs> right. With that sort of size, it doesn't have to be Jerry Rice. You know what I'm saying? Or Tony Gonzalez. Right. And uh, I've gotten to watch a little bit of his huddle film since then because I'm I'm very interested in this kid. I, I don't think he's got a rating on him yet. Uh, but I, I would not be surprised if, if this kid's finding himself a, a very highly sought after prospect um, as time goes on. There's. That size and athleticism combination just doesn't come around very often. Yep. Offers from Alabama, Arkansas, Colorado, Florida, and Florida State. Those will continue to pile up. And um, here's another tight end prospect, Elias Williams. I believe he is committed to Georgia, right, Kev? Yeah. And so this is kind of the, a different side of a similar coin. He's huge, but more in a length type way. So he's more of a kind of a big wide receiver type uh, receiving threat kind of guy. Um, it's hard not to like him just for almost the same reasons. He's, he's also a massive individual, very long, huge, huge receiving threat. Um, and he just moves very fluidly. You can see kind of here for a tight end. This is, this is a pretty nice route. I'd say so too. Florida State's got a nice little recent history of plucking Georgia commits. So we'll see <laughs> if that continues. Make that streak go into two. Cam Davis is the longtime FSU commit. A lot of people, the the evaluators have been a little bit down on him as far as like his ranking going down. He's still a pretty highly rated four star. What'd you think about seeing Cam Davis in the flesh? A lot of people were surprised positively by his foot speed out there. What did you see, Kev? Yeah, I think the thing about Cam is that his his best attributes probably aren't going to come out well in this camp setting. I think mm -hmm. he moves well in space, especially considering, you know, his his size and his build. Um, I'd love to see him kind of just running through a, a congested box instead of running routes downfield. But I, st I still think his his talent shine. Um, I think that. I think he looked good and I think he was, he was definitely the star out of the bunch of the, the running backs at, at camp. So, I mean, I, I think, you know, we know what we have in Cam Davis for the past couple of years as he's been committed. Uh, he's a, a stocky dude moves well in space, low center of gravity. He's gonna be hard to take down plays quarterback at the high school level. So um, really has a lot of room to grow too. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm glad to see him. Uh, I'm glad to see him silence some of the doubters in this. And I can't wait for a nice catch. Nice catch down the field. Kobe Howard. This is a 2025 three star wide receiver. That's a nice catch. This is a kid that uh, Chris, Brendan, and Zach noted is coming back from a pretty serious injury the year before. But they said that now he's looking he's looking as good as he did pre injury. So I, I assume that rating is going to go up. Yeah, I would think so, too. I, I think we all came away just being very impressed with what this kid is giving you. Um, especially since so early on, uh, Jamie French is wearing number two in black and they have very similar builds and even route running profiles. So uh, that's high praise. Jamie French is a really good receiver. I think this kid's got a bright future in front of him. Um, and you can see here, this, this, this kid that's covering him is, is, is no slouch. So he's able to, kind of get some separation on that first route and, and finish the play. And 
I think Kobe Howard's a kid, local kid out of Pensacola, someone to look out for. Yep, Pensacola Catholic 2025. B.J. Gibson, this is the Florida State receiver commit. This is a guy that in people's mock wide receiver drafts, when they or their mock wide receiver class, when they get a little bit of pie in the sky, this is the guy that's often forgotten about for some of those top uncommitted prospects. I love the way this kid runs routes, man. He looks good. Did you agree from being out there? Yeah, I think he's exactly what you're looking for in a slot receiver. You see exactly the kind of two things that are commonly asked of a slot receiver. You run nice tight routes. Oh, that's good right there. Good cut. Um, so you can see he's clearly part of a good weight program. Um, he's got a really good strength about him, uh, which is kind of, you know, something you don't see very often out of these high school wide receivers it allows him to make good cuts. And here he is kind of running what you'd expect to call a slot fade in, in Norvell system. And, Oh. Uh, gas in a dude. So uh, good burst off the line. It's nice to not only like once you can, we can upgrade that slot position, Kev, from the reliable possession receiver. If we can inject some athleticism in there, like a kid like BJ Gibson, like you said, like that is a great slot in the Norvell offense, man. That kid, I thought he looked. Well, I think we we talked about when we looked at his film. He just looks professional, right? Like a very professional kid. Very crisp route runner. Um, strong at the at the point of the catch you can see there uh yeah i i don't i don't know what his top end speed is like but i don't think he's a guy that you're going to be asking a ton to beat downfield i think he's very dangerous in, in small spaces right with that kind of that with some speed and when necessary as we saw from that clip a couple clips ago where he dusted the kid off the line so i'm happy to have him in the class there's elias williams again nice tough catch across the middle while we're here, I want to kind of take a look at this running back. Um, I like this kid. I kind of asked Brendan to put him in the, in the recap. Uh, so he's he's a no star out of Tennessee. Um, remind me his name, Trey. I think, I think he said Damon Cisse. Is that yeah. what he said his name was? Uh, yeah, he's a he's a no star running back out of out of Tennessee. I think he's a kid you can float a float a um, preferred walk on type thing towards him. Uh, he's he's not the biggest kid you can kind of see. He's he's smaller. Uh, I I think he's the kind of kid that could go to, a, to to an air raid team and really make trouble for people, or some like UCF type program. Sure. Um, but you can see, I think he moves well in space. That's a really good cut making the play there. Uh, it's a good thing to point out, man. These camps are valuable. Obviously, right now the the focus of this one is get your commit some work getting that neck, doing some recruiting ahead. But then also, like you said, maybe lay some PWO footprints, maybe take a look at some of these kids who are diamonds in the rough. And uh, Norvell and his staff, they're always working these types of camps for every possible angle of benefit for the team. And that's just another one. So that was good to point him out, give that kid a little bit of shine in case any college coaches are watching. I'm sure you guys are. So one of the things that people kind of got upset about was that, there was criticism about the linebackers. Um, I think a lot of that had to do with them having to match up with this tight end room, which was just <sighs> star studded. <laughs> yeah. Man. Um, and, and the running backs, which a running back versus a tight end in space is our versus the linebacker in space is just not fair. So you see it here, just his size. He's able to box out that, uh, that safety. Um, I'm not seeing a bunch of like soft coverage and that many times where dudes are getting run away from. It's just, there are a bunch of physical specimens out there, brother. Some yeah. Genetic no. freaks, man. Like that was the tight end group. The most impressive to you from a physical standpoint from top to bottom, probably. I mean, you just, I mean, when Landon Thomas is, is fitting in with the crowd, it's, it's a really good group of kids. I know. Isn't that nuts, man? That's a good, we haven't even talked about him really much yet. That's a legit, like five star, <laughs> like awesome kid. Yeah, here's good rep. So the throw by Luke. This is kind of what you're talking about. He's just got the arm strength. He want, this is, this is a really tough throw across the field. Good catch. Um, and then you have Cam Davis dropping a ball. And uh, Mike's super stoked about it right here. Oh, man, that's a pat. Look at that thunder clap there. Oh, that clap is in midseason form. So this guy came away oppressing us, uh, Greg Thomas. 
this defensive back. You, you'll see a few reps back to back here of him just kind of being on top of people, doing a really good job. Does a good job of kind of capping this route, but being ready to break. Here he is on BJ Gibson again, doing a good job. Yeah. I think he's from 25 defensive back at a American heritage, I think. Yeah. And then Patterson, Zaquan Patterson is, is this corner here again, doing a good job kind of capping this receiver staying with him. He, he's, he was probably, he probably stood out as the most like purely athletic out of, out of, out of the defensive back room. So. That's a great um, play too from Fruz from uh, four star from Shamanad, Madonna, uh, a school that Florida State is picking up some serious momentum with. So keep an eye on his recruitment. Um, so Cam's not the focus of this, but you can see him kind of get the edge on the defense back here. And then a good battle there between Jamie French and a corner. But, Oof, yeah. I don't know, but I, don't, I ain't calling that a battle right there, dude. That, well, this one isn't. The last one is, was. <laughs> yeah, last one was. That is nasty. Yeah, this Jamie French is, is a different level of wide receiver um, than you really were seeing out there. Yeah, and then, he, uh, Mandarin, he's the, once again, Zach has called him, but he thinks the best wide receiver in the state for 2025. Look at Big Kendra, dude. What are you gonna, <laughs> how are you going to stop that? What are you going to do? I freaking love that. See, that's what I'm talking about. When you were talking about the route running, obviously he's going to come to FSU and the bald menace, Chris Thompson, is going to coach him up. <laughs> but that is quite a canvas that he has to work with. You know what I mean, dude? Yeah, honestly. Oh, that's just bully. Boy. Come on. <laughs> yeah, There's nothing much to say about that. Here's Cam. This is the same play, just from a different angle. Yeah, over, overthrown, but he gets separation. And then uh, here we go. We're watching some of the big guys. Some of the big guys go. Zion Grady, he's the ultra-talented kid out of, uh, I think, Troy, Alabama is where he's from. Yeah. Yeah. Good rep by the, the tackle here. And Todd does a good job standing up. Another Elias Williams. Yeah, Jared Smith. This is that big 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six kid. He loves Florida State. That's another kid from, I think he's from the Birmingham area. Which yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of really talented kids from uh, old, old Saban's backyard. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what old Mike, we'll see what Mike and uh, the Greek freak can do. Yeah, Zion Grady. Jared Smith is on a different level. Zion Grady is also a kid that's going to have himself a good football career. So, both of those guys just... Honestly, everybody from the defensive end room looked pretty good. So there were a couple guys in there like I think Elias Williams might be someone that I don't know if he's going to end up being on the interior or the exterior. Uh, mm -hmm. Same with this Jalen Wiggins guy. He's, he's probably going to be more of an interior guy, but um, lots of talent there. And here we go. And then Luke. Spins. Let's go. Just doing some 360s. Not bad, man. Tony Hawk would be proud. Very impressive stuff. Well, how's that? We got anything else we gotta we gotta review, or is it just trick shots from here? I a little think it's dude just perfect action. A little dude perfect action, yep. Well, I came away. I was not out there because there's no way they want me in person actually watching one of these things. They want to keep me at an arm's length, but a nice, respectable guy like you, he gets to go on the field and take a look. Um, I came away very impressed with the level of talent. Especially, and I would um, point you guys to all the articles on Knowles 24-7, all the video interviews on the Knowles 24-7 YouTube page. Check it out. A lot of these kids had some really nice things to say about Florida State. We didn't even talk about some of the guys over there, like five-star wide receiver, 2024 uncommitted prospect Cam Coleman. Florida State is in a very, very interesting spot for momentum right now and just some of the things that they are on the cusp of maybe doing, especially with if they're going to have the sort of season that we expect them to. So as I mentioned earlier, Kev, do biggest surprise, guy you tell all of your chemistry textbooks to have on the team, and then MVP. Um. Man, th th those are some tough, tough options. That's I all think I have. Biggest surprise, I'm going to put Kendra Harrison into that category. Wasn't expecting this guy to show up, this, you know, freshman turning sophomore to show up and just kind of really blow me away in this tight end <laughs> room that was dude. stacked. Um, so 
stacked with kids. I think he's just got all all the potential in the world. Hopefully he can stay healthy and keep developing. Um, so he was he was my surprise. Um, I think sell all my chemistry textbook that goes to Jared Smith. Got to have an elite pass rusher. I think he's as good as it comes. Um, and so he's got the size. He's got the bend. Uh, he's got the length. He's got everything you want. So that's the guy that I'm not leaving without. Uh, MVP. You're going to take know. an FSU commit? You're going to take an uncommitted guy? Like who was the top performer of the camp for you? Could be one of the other two, though. You don't have to. You don't have to pick something different if your heart feels a, a certain way. I just. I think I've. I think my heart's got to go out to to Luke. I think. Um. I think his leadership. I thought Perfect. he interacted with with the other quarterbacks really well. You could see that he was kind of taking Tremel under his under his wing. Um. It's kind of hard to evaluate these guys because I'm. I mean, I don't have the stats. They're thrown four at a time. It's hard to yeah. kind of really get a look at them, but. I think Luke is is the guy, and I think that he's going to be the guy going forward. Um, so, I like it. He's the MVP and the real MVPs. All of you watching and supporting, thank you very much. We are going to be here. We are still plowing through the top 40 most important players <laughs> list. There's a seven on camp. There's a big man camp. There's, a, I don't know, there's a bajillion. There's a camp on a camp, a super camp. I don't know. There's all the camps. There's all the recruiting news. We've got some big official visit weekends coming up, as always. Knowles 24-7. I think that there's a 60% off deal. Subscribe. Subscribe to Knowles 24-7. Get your deal. Drink your Chattanooga whiskey. Get a little crazy. Sell your house with the Turner Group. Tell them that Knowles 24-7 sent you. We love you guys. There's going to be a ton of information, ton of audio, ton of video. So, of course, subscribe to all the YouTube pages. This one you're watching it on and subscribe to the X's and Knowles YouTube channel as well. And just get ready. Buckle yourselves in because there is no offseason with Knowles 24-7. With that being said, I am Trey Roland. That was Kevin Little. Keep chopping.